Welcome to This Week in Guns, a podcast that covers the latest firearms industry news, information, and buzz. Brought to you by the Firearms Radio Network. I'm your host, Jake Challen from Gun Guy Radio, and Brownells helps make this show possible. Selection, service, satisfaction. Find it all at Brownells. Please visit thisweekinguns.com slash Brownells. Well, we have a little bit smaller panel this week, but a great one nonetheless. We have Joe Underwood joining us again. He's an educator, concealed carry instructor, and SAS shooter, among other things. Hey, Joe, how you doing? I'm good, Jake. Good evening, guys. And uh, Peter Palma, former Marine sniper, inventor of MS Clean, and uh, contestant on two seasons of History Channel's Top Shot. Hey, Peter. Hey, what's going on? And uh, now you can also contribute to the Firearms Radio Network and This Week in Guns by shopping at Amazon. So simply go to firearmsradio.tv slash Amazon before uh, your shopping spree. So let's get into the top stories of the evening. Uh, the first one is uh, titled Shock Verdict. Um, Mark Bertaschek. I'm sure I said that wrong. He's uh, He was found uh, guilty uh, in D.C. court of possessing muzzleloader bullets in the District of Columbia. This was a court case that has been going on for a little while now. He um, um, he was basically raided by the local PD, and they found um, an inert shotgun shell and that's really what this case has been about, an inert shotgun shell that was a dud. He, he took it on a hunting trip. It didn't go off. He came back and threw it on a shelf, and it sat there for like uh, like 10 years or something. And um, so he also had muzzle loader projectiles. So, you know, muzzle loader, the projectiles, it, that's all it is is a projectile. It has no powder, no nothing. And he had sabots for a mu- muzzle loader as well. And uh, they ended up not convicting him on the shotgun <clears throat> shell, which was the focus of the case. Um, because my understanding in D.C., you can't uh, possess ammunition for guns that you do not have, uh, I guess, registered in D.C. All right. So he was he was convicted on uh, the sabots, the muzzle-loading sabots, because the judge felt that they looked... Like ammunition, they look like <laughs> bullets. This is like it—it's just ridiculous that you could sit in some states and you could legally own a machine gun, and a silencer, and thermal optics, and like the best stuff ever. And this guy—they're nitpicking, they're literally wasting our time and money over a piece of lead, you know, covered in a whatever. Like, there, what if you had like a civil war thing? Thing. Well, I mean, what, what, like, when when does it end? You know, because I have like, I know I gave some people throughout throughout time, like some, you'll find Civil War bullets, like either they'll dig them up or they find them in trees or whatever it is. Like, what, like, would that be, would that count too? You know, like a where where it's just a piece of lead. So when does what if it's like a wheel weight on my car? Like, a, it's kind of like the air's defense. Like, where does it become a bullet? Like, at what point? Now, if I if I remember correctly, this. Um other than the lunacy, there there's some things behind this. There's some, some political maneuvering here. Uh, he had thoroughly pissed some pretty high-ranking people off in, in D.C. Metro. Not like national politicians, but some of the D.C. Metro people. Uh, something had happened. He had made some, some fairly powerful enemies, and I think there's a lot more to this story than just the lunacy of, oh, look, I have a mini ball. Oh, you felon. I, I had not heard that part. That is uh, very interesting because he owns he owns a financial management company. Right. Uh, that sounds shady to start with. <laughs> <laughs> Managing finances, yeah. yeah. I, What's up I, with that? <laughs> I knew I had the right CPA when I asked him what 2 plus 2 was, and he said, what figure did you have in mind? <laughs> <laughs> right, right on. Um, so... <laughs> The real crime here, uh, obviously, again, besides the lunacy, and yeah, we can talk about that, but this poor guy, he got sentenced to time served, a $50 fine. Okay, that's all pretty pejorant, but then he now has to register as a gun 
criminal in D.C., and he has lost his civil rights to, to firearm ownership now. And he has to take a uh, class for what gun criminals, what do they call it? A, um, he has to take... I don't know, a class they sing gangbangers to, I guess. I, I, don't, I don't understand it. The craziest, one of the craziest parts to me was that the judge, was, you know, they, they had the shotgun shell, and the judge was looking yeah. at it, and he was, like, shaking it, and he's like, I don't hear any gunpowder. <laughs> and the, they, they tried to find a lab that same day to cut the shell apart. No, he first the judge was like, let's just cut it apart and see. But clearly, the gunpowder, like, where did it go magically disappear? So the gunpowder is in there, you know, even if it's a dud or the primer didn't go off or whatever it is. So, like, okay, yeah, I, you could cut, I know how to cut a shotgun shell, so it's not going to go off or do whatever. It's not that hard. You just cut the top. But I could see in a courtroom, like, if there's a judge shaking, like, let's just see, I'd be like, um, I'm leaving because God knows what you're oh, yeah. doing. They'd have brought in bolt cutters and a Dremel and. Right. Yeah, your, your pocket well, knife the door, Well, it's just crazy. It's like it's like the judge, no matter what, wanted to convict him. So he was like, you know, there's three things in front of me. Which one looks most like an illegal item here? Let's see. Right, and that's and again that goes back to the idea that I've read in a couple places now that he had he had made some Politico enemies. Hmm. Well, um, they're gonna appeal it. You know, his lawyer says, and uh, it, it's just a rough couple of years for this guy. Um, and how much money is this guy out? Even if he's a fully exonerated later on. Yeah, yeah. How much money is this guy out? Over a hundred grand, had, probably. Didn't this start with his wife, like, setting him up or something like that first? Let's not forget that part of the thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's that part of the story, too, yeah. yeah. Here's one when they're like, say, okay, in D.C., he's like a... If he goes to... Is he a felon now or whatever? Like, if he goes to... No. Like he's, he's not. not so if he could go to California or, or not California, rather, he could come to Louisiana and own a machine gun. Then, still. Uh, yeah. No, he's not a felon, so he didn't well, lose. Well, and, and his family has moved out of the district. They, they've moved to Virginia. So. Now I I didn't think he was actually in D.C. proper. Wasn't he in town, or was it actually in D.C.? Am I, I think he had an apartment there or something like that. Okay. That they went. Where well, the residence was in D.C. Right. Well, and we okay. talked about like his sister's place was out in Virginia, and the cops went and raided it too. And it's just a long, yeah. It's, it really seems like there's more to this, like you're saying, Joe. Like, like someone in power was really out to get this guy. But you know, I've got my tinfoil hat on now, so. Um, <laughs> I so sell anyway, those website. <laughs> you do tinfoilhat.com. I do. I do. All right. Well. So, anti-gun California Senator um, Leland Yee charged with gun running. That's right. <laughs> anti-gun senator charged with gun running and bribery and public corruption and so on, so on, so on. And right. Awesome. Allegedly conspired. Allegedly conspired to uh, organ to have known and to conspire with a uh, known crime lord. Um, Quark Ching? I, I don't know. I'm sorry. Butchering these. AKA Shrimp Boy. <laughs> no. Is it says that? No, yeah, yeah that's what it's known as. He's, he's actually a pretty major. He's a major player in the Philippine uh, gun market. Right. Well, so, I don't want to mess with him then. So the affidavit charges um, him with $2 million worth of weapons that have been secreted into the country from the Philippines, including rocket launchers and machine guns, some of which he himself had fired while in Mandano. And, uh, That's awesome. Yeah. Well, try before you buy, right? That's yeah, right. my policy. Let me shoot this uh, RPG off to see what it's like. So they, they were... Smuggling them here from the Philippines, and then they were smuggling them out through New Jersey, and then they planned to forward them to North Africa via Sicily. And this, I mean, what is? I don't really understand this. Why do you have to go through the U.S. to get? Yeah, because if you're in the Philippines, Africa is like through. You would just to get in a boat and just drive right. There. Like I mean, you just go around India and 
there you're there, pretty much, right? Yeah, it seems overly complicated, but I, I don't know. I'm not a gun running expert, so um, I only play one on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does seem convoluted. Uh, man, okay, first of all, it is alleged, uh, uh, hold out hope that this ass clown is innocent, I suppose, but um, to the good people of California, I'm sorry. To all the rest of the, the ass clowns in California, you reap the whirlwind, man. You elected them. Deal with it. Yeah, I mean, th this guy, I don't know, it, it's, it kind of goes back to, you know, the mayors against illegal guns. Uh, a lot of them have been... Uh, convicted on corruption yeah. charges and other charges. Yeah. So, uh, birds of a feather? Uh, yeah. Uh, again, t uh, I know better. You you, you know, you plebeians, you, you do as I tell you, I'll do as I please. Right. <laughs> I just like when they, like, pretty much get arrested for doing what they're saying not to do. It's that's pretty rad. It's like of all the things he could have done, he it could he could have like been caught with a bunch of heroin and would be like, oh, anti-gun guy caught with heroin, it wouldn't have, wouldn't have the same ring to it as it does. Like anti-gun guy caught running guns. Totally. Awesome. Uh, New or so nailed it. We're going to Louisiana. <laughs> we're, we're going to, uh... I'm sorry, Jake. That was funny, Peter. <laughs> So this is in uh, kind, of, kind of your neck of the woods, Peter. New oh, Orleans yeah. police are only two hours away when you need them. Oh, I believe it. This to everyone, to everyone in the South, I apologize for the way Jake just pronounced New Orleans. <laughs> it's all right, Nolans. Nola, we just call it Nola. Uh, yeah, that's what I love about New Orleans. No, I guess I, I guess it would be the same kind of like Detroit, where they're like cutting back on the cops all the time, and there's like all these dilapidated buildings. So it's like an urban spelunkers like dream. Like cops can't even get to people's houses who live in them, and people are kicking the doors down. So if you want to go explore an abandoned building, just have at it. You have at least a day for the cops show up to find you. Right. You no, know, if they right. come at all. Yeah, this is like the open carrier's dream paradise, right? They, they could open carry around the whole whole subdivision and not get called on, right? Yeah, and you could totally um to you could totally like conceal carry there too. You could conceal carry, you know, I have a concealed weapons permit in Louisiana. I could just carry it all around. But I mean, if you carry it down in some of those places, you're going to have to shoot somebody. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, it's just a given. It's yeah, gonna happen. Will. It, like if you, if I spend one week just walk around Nolan's at nighttime, I will sh have to shoot somebody, which is horrible thing because of all the legal stuff you have to go through afterwards if you decide to go that route. Is uh is Louisiana an open carry state as well? It it is and it isn't. You know, like of course you can open carry, but you could also have to like. They they don't let you. It is technically it's legal, but they're like, hey, dude, you have like a rifle on you. They have too much time to mess around with you. I I wouldn't do it. Clearly. So, anyways, uh, back to the story. Terry yeah. Price, as she awoke early uh, at the sound of someone trying to break down her door, and um, you know she dialed nine one one, and her dog was going nuts and stuff, and. Uh, <sighs> So the guy took off, they think, because of the dog going nuts. And, Which, I don't know, you see the dog, it was like this big. And it was like, <laughs> I don't know, it was like the calmest looking dog. So I'm like, yeah, I don't know if that was it necessarily. Well, may maybe she started barking after 911. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sound like, my dog, get a bigger dog. <laughs> because, yeah, 911 didn't pick up, not once, not twice, but three times. And then she finally got through on a, a fourth phone call to a different number. She called then, the non-emergency number twice. She called 911 twice, it didn't work. Called the non-emergency number, it didn't work. Then she called, like, I don't know exactly what, it was some other, it was not even the non-emergency cop number. It was like her, it was like the congresswoman or something like that. It wasn't, it wasn't the congresswoman, but it was something uh, like it that. Was, it, it was some kind of like different jurisdiction, different magistrate. Yeah, it was a diff yeah exactly. It was a different jurisdiction. Yeah, you're like right. in, in Texas, she quit calling the cops and called the sheriff. It would be kind of analogous to the way I read the story. Yeah. Right. And so they finally showed up, you know, a couple hours later. No big hurry. Mm. So, and, and since then, uh, or she's recently bought a Taurus 32 revolver, which 
I don't know about the 32 part of that, but it is uh, is nice to hear that she's taking her self protection into her own hands. I do agree. Now go get some training. <laughs> yeah, I know she needed some training. She was holding the gun as if like you handed somebody a baby for the first time. Just like holding, like what do I do with this? You know. So yeah, she definitely needs some training there. On it. So this this is really nothing new. We hear this from multiple places across the United States where police response times can be ridiculous, even where maybe they're not under budget. You know, part of the problem here in New Orleans is that they're they're broke and they're yeah. laying off officers and all of that. But you know, if you live in more of a rural area, you know, if you live out in one of the mountain states, it could easily be a couple hours just because of your location. What is uh, what is that really bad old joke? And, I, and I'm by no means making light of this lady's situation, but the old man calls the cops because some kids are breaking into his shed, and the lady says, we don't have any cops to send. He's okay, hangs up, calls back and says, never mind, don't worry, I shot him. Cops show up instantly. Right. Says, yeah. I thought you said you shot him. I thought you said there were no cops. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Okay, so on to a 20-year-old Mercedes-Benz, and uh, which is bu- bulletproof, and they tested it by shooting at it with a guy inside it. Now, I, I missed this part of it. At what point does this car become bulletproof? Is it, I missed that. Or, or just Mercedes always that way and I'm no, stupid? Or? I think they made it. Into it, was a, it was a bulletproof model. It, it was sold, uh, apparently sold from the factory, from my understanding, as a bulletproof edition. You can get that option from Mercedes. Okay, I didn't well, know that. You know, luxury, not, nothing but the best. Did you see the rims on this car? It's yeah. definitely an early <laughs> 90s. The yeah. spray-painted gold rims, yeah. that's. Yeah. So that I, awesome. I'm not sure. Um, this looks like you know a fun test to do, but I'm not sure I would do it with a guy inside the car. <laughs> the guy's like, uh, hey, don't worry. I'll, I'll shoot one shot, and we'll see how it works. <laughs> you let me know. <laughs> You let me know. Hold my beer. Watch this. That's the, that's how that story started. But it did work. He he, he shot it with a nine millimeter. Shot the window and shot the door, and uh, it was fine. Didn't penetrate. Um, and then uh, there's a second video. So, uh, by the way, show notes are at uh, thisweekinguns.com/zero-six-four when this publishes, uh, and these links will be embedded. But then they uh, shot it with uh, ARs and uh, some shotguns and stuff, and uh, the ARs just blaze right through it, go through one door out the other. So uh, did the the bulletproofing fibers break down in 20 years? Have ballistics improved that much, or Mercedes selling a load of crap, or what? There's different ratings of uh, bullet resistance. Really, there's nothing bulletproof. Uh, You know, it's just like... um, Bulletproof vests, plate carriers, you know, they're rated... Level 3, for, level 3A. Right, for different yeah. levels. So, some are only good for pistol caliber. Some go up to rifle, certain yeah. rifle calibers. The car didn't so seem Mercedes. to be that... Like, it's probably a lower level for pistols and fragmentation or something like that. Because you can see, like, I've seen bulletproof vehicles before that, like, the windows were way thicker... And everything. This one seemed like you couldn't really tell the difference. Where some of the ones that you see, they take AKs to and stuff like that. They definitely. I mean, you could tell that it's an armored vehicle, you know, for the most part. Uh, but this one seemed very. Okay. It so, seemed like it seemed like if you didn't tell me it was bulletproof, I wouldn't know. Right, which was kind of impressive for the early '90s. Yeah. Um, so. Unless they had a rifle, then. And so Mercedes. They, right. <laughs> Mercedes put some 18 gauge steel in the door panels and said, "Here, let's charge the, 9,000." He extra. shot the first shot. He did was the window. So he shot the window. Boom. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The, oh, I'm, yeah, yeah I'm just talking about the doors. Yeah. Yeah. And then he just lit the door up, which they, I don't know sure exactly where the armor is in there, or if it's Kevlar or if it was steel or what, but okay. they definitely he My, they had at it. And he put a couple rounds like more or less through the same hole, which was nerve wracking to me watching it. And the fact that there was a guy sitting behind it—that was also—it seemed a little excessive. I don't know why you would 
tested like that. They literally tested like that. There was no holes in it before. It was pristine. So they're like, if it wasn't going to work, they were going to find out when the guy starts screaming bloody murder. It just wow. seems like kind of like, I don't know why people do this. They shoot themselves with body armor on. They they do that. It's like, you're just going to have other people shoot themselves because they're stupid, which is whatever. But Yeah, there's this thing called social Darwinism. Yeah, just, but still, I mean, it just seems a little, whatever, I guess if it's something you want to do, go for it, but. Yeah. All right, so our friend uh, Kirsten Joy Weiss um, has an article here on the truth about guns, and it's about why she said no to America's Got Talent. Mm-hmm. And uh, she apparently um, was approached uh, by them because they stumbled across her videos, and the producers asked her to uh, attend one of their auditions. And uh, she ended up not being able to or not wanting to, one of the two. And uh, they still wanted her on the show, even after that. And so they called her, and um, they had a little problem with her talent of shooting guns, apparently. They, they wanted her to tone it down a little bit, maybe shoot a bow or a crossbow. So, so if this story is a hundred percent accurate, and I'm sure that Kristen's version is, I've talked to her a few times. She seems like good people. It, it really makes you want to get your tinfoil hat out. You knew full well what her talent was, so you're going to pick her, and then tell her to change her talent. Are are they looking for something they can edit? And uh, it just it seems a little sketch to me. Well, I mean. I mean, they probably, you know, if you know Kirsten, she's attractive, she's personable, yeah. she's smart, she's well spoken, and she's put together these cool videos that people are watching and stuff. So, you know, it would be neat for them to have. They're trying to, you know, obviously, like anything that ends up cool on YouTube, somebody else tries to, to eventually take over. But, you know, <clears throat> they they really can't do the gun thing that well. I mean, they do it on the History Channel or on those other channels, but on a major network to do that, that's a little rough. So and, and I, I get all that. I, I buy exactly what the TV is trying so to sell. So they just wanted her to shoot something else, and she was like, "As awesome as she is." So that. she was like, "I guess." That. I guess they're just completely ignorant of the fact that those are completely different disciplines. And have yeah, and they're shooting little... something, and it's like uh, guns are bad, but a crossbow doesn't have that okay. connotation yeah. to it. That that actually makes a little more sense when you say it like that. And but the the big part of the story, I guess, is hats off to Kristen uh, being a woman of integrity and. Uh, we we need a heck of a lot more people, male, female, whatever, in our industry, yeah. with that level of integrity. Exactly. Like I even think there was a bunch of people in the in the industry who would have been like, "Hell, I'll go on," you know what I mean, and and shoot a bow or whatever it is. But um, I tried to like figure her out once or twice before. I'm like, is she really that sweet and nice? And whatever. Or is this some sort of like cover for like, <laughs> you know, like is somebody really that sweet out there? And she really is like so sweet. That I don't even really want to talk to her because I'm such a horrible human. I'm like, I, just, I, just, just talk to somebody, find somebody in church or something. Like, I, I've, talk I've to talked people. to her a couple times and I think I've done a podcast with her. We like shooting or something. And she really does translate that well. You pretty much get diabetes just, just being around her. She's so sweet. That's oh, I'm gonna have to steal that from you. Oh, you like that? Yeah. Yeah. You're you're welcome to it. <laughs> so, so Silencer Co. has uh, released a video on how to purchase a suppressor. Um, this is pretty creative. <laughs> when I first played it, when I first played it, I'm like, is this is this really like a 60 year old TV commercial? <laughs> But, uh, yeah, they do it in a retro style with retro f film, but uh, with modern uh, information. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a lot of people, I don't know if it's a good thing because then I'll have to wait longer to get my suppressors, but a lot of people don't get them because, well, one, they're like, well, I don't want to wait. Well, I'm like, then you will never, ever have one. You know, if <laughs> Did you want one a year ago? Yes. Well, then you would have it now if you did started it. So, right. so do it. But... A lot of people just think it's like an impossible thing, and I think a lot of that's just in education that it's not illegal to have a, s a silencer, you know, and it's not that difficult to do. I mean, I did it. Come on. So and most of, most of the silencer companies do all of the technical stuff for you. You you fill in the blanks and you mail the checks, and you know that's obviously the 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 ultimate responsibility is on you. But the three or four I've ever dealt with, they'll do it all for you. 
Yeah, because that's what people are scared of it, and, and it's whatever. But this video is great because it's kind of like one of those, you know, it breaks it down, and it's like funny and whatever. So it's like it's completely not scared. They did a really excellent job on this. How uh, you know? Yeah. How they they play the humor in it, and then they like just they also show educate you, and it's also super showing you how super easy it is. Yeah. I, I agree. It's 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 well done marketing. Go team. I think it's more difficult to probably to purchase a vehicle than it is to get a silencer. You know, obviously the ATF doesn't check to see if you get a car or not. So, you know, anybody or, listening or thinking, that. oh, that's horrible, you know, they still have to, yeah, do they, right? <laughs> right. In about a year, they and will. I, I'm going to go ahead, and while we're on the topic, I'm going to go ahead and plug uh, Gun Trust. If, if you haven't done that yet, I really recommend it. Uh, at least look into it. It's super easy to do. They're very inexpensive. And it, it, it covers a multitude of sins. Hurry up and do it now before he shuts it down by executive order. Yeah. I have an LLC. Same thing. Nah, well, yeah, same same critter, yeah. yeah. For we mere mortals, it's a, a gun trust. Well, I, my suppressors, actually, my I have the two that I have coming are off of LLC, Foxtrot and Unicorn LLC. Right, yeah. But, uh, uh, I remember you were talking about that. The other ones are, um, they, my local law enforcement signed off on it, so I wouldn't even need, you know, uh, that loophole, if you will, if that's what it is. Right, yeah. And it's, it's the simplicity of it, though, is, is, yeah. is not even necessary for loophole sake as much as I don't have to seek out, well, is the sheriff the high official or is it the yeah, yeah. police chief? And it, it just it covers all of that. Just here, it, it belongs to, you know, the, the Fat Boy Trust. All right, well, we're on to New England where gun control freaks paint themselves into a corner. This is examiner.com. Now, this. I wish this was literal. Yeah. I like to see that picture. <laughs> <laughs> well, the bottom of this article um, concerns me a little bit because they start talking about um, smuggling, um, banned uh, contraband. And to the states that ban, you know, magazine bans and stuff, and they're they're talking about. I guess there's this movement for people in more pro-gun states to send these contraband items over state lines to the resistance. I don't, <laughs> I, I I don't know what they're trying to do here. I, I mean, are, are they trying trying to go to jail? Yeah, that's that's how it reads, doesn't it? But then again, this author, you know, what I, I didn't vet this article, so does this author have any idea what they're talking about? And that, uh, well, that's why this is just a commentary show and not a news show. Yeah. <laughs> I just, you know, I mean, <clears throat> that's why we have different states. So it, there, uh, you do hear a lot about that from people in, in like, anti-gun states like New York, whatever, it's like, oh, you just go to Pennsylvania and get stuff, or you can go to Georgia and get things and bring it up here. But, you know, hey, that's just, you know, you can well, get that a bunch is, of it. That is one way that people can get handguns in California because, you know, they're Rim and, or Ruger, uh, Smith & Wesson, you know, they're falling off the California safe gun list, and uh, they're not going to be able to buy them any longer, but they can buy them from out of state and bring them in, apparently, or, or they can buy them from, like, a law enforcement officer who decided to sell theirs. Yeah. And stuff I don't like think that. you can bring them in. From what I remember from being there, you, it has to, you couldn't, you could not bring it in. You had to, uh, you know, do the transfer there. So, yeah, it's curious, though, why, why you would send magazines to uh, I, I don't know well like say in New, Jer New York and New Jersey the magazine capacity is like under 10 so say so I could buy in Pennsylvania for whatever and then you know p people have asked me to do that before too hey I live in the state can you buy me a bunch of mags or whatever so well, in, in like California they have um, it's like a single shot exemption right where they can convert a gun to a, a single shot configuration and then it's not illegal to unconvert it. Oh yeah, yeah. 
I, I've never cared enough to find out what California's gun laws are on that. Yeah, that's a, There is like some loopholes like that, but it's you're on a slippery slope right there. And they don't. And like, if you were to end up in a court in California, that gray area that you're in, they may not necessarily, you know, agree with that. Especially when it's up to somebody else's, uh, like somebody else's judgment, some other judges judgment. Like, like for example, the dude who had sabots. You know, I'm sure, you know, that was at the edge of one fence. You know from the black and white area where they just took it. So it's like, yeah, maybe technically legal, and yeah, do you want to really have a legal battle? No. So you better, like, like Ares, like Ares whatever it is, do, do not walk. Do not be be clearly on the one side of the fence when it comes to legality, especially with guns, because then all you're doing is, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to help you out at all. So. All right, well, let's go to Heart of Fire Church in Louisville, Kentucky. Oh my gosh! And uh, this is a, a pro gun church that uh, it says it has rock and roll spirit. And oh. has a little interview interview here that he did with Guns dot com. The, the the past he was a pastor. Or was he? Or wait, bishop? Bishop? Excuse me, Bishop Dan Johnson. And he's right there in the church in front of the altar holding a AK forty seven. So what what do you think? Is this your your kind of church? Uh, I guess it's better than snakes, <laughs> you know. But still, there's a, there's like a red state. There was a movie Red State. This reminds me of it's just like any time when any religion gets kind of extreme, that's when I start to like kind of shy away from it. Like really, no history has proven nobody religion that's gotten kind of extreme like that has ever really been nice, let's say. Didn't really end well for anybody around them or them themselves, you know. Well, they, they, you know, they cite scripture. Jesus thought it was important, and in the book of Luke, he told his disciples, he said, bring a coat. If you have a coat, bring a coat. If you have a bag, bring a bag. If you have luggage, if you don't have a sword, he said, sell your coat and buy a sword. Yeah, yeah. I well, I read that in the Bible the first time. I'm like, whoa, and it's that's important. awesome. So I, I don't know if he, this struck me as extreme. I don't know. What do you think, Joe? Um, I, I'm going to be a little reserved in my commentary here. I was a junior in high school in Waco, Texas, when the uh, Branch Davidian Mount Carmel thing went down. I could literally, no, no joking, I could see the smoke from my house. Um, so I, I really, uh, I don't disagree with what I have read on this page. They certainly have the rights. They're within their rights. You know, rock on if this is what you're going to do. Um, be aware that if you're you're representing two things that are passionately important to a lot of Americans, and that is religion, uh, specifically Christianity and the Second Amendment. So represent it well, brother. If not, you're going to have to answer for it. Yeah. Um, so let's moving on. Now, Michigan to end a ban on some short-barreled rifles and shotguns. So I did not know this, but Michigan had passed a ban on these back in 1931, and some say that it served as a template for the National Firearms Act of 1934, which banned, you know, which created, you know, the SBR, uh, S, mm -hmm. SB. BS laws, you know, and uh, so Michigan, you know, has repeal uh, has passed in the House and Senate and is headed to governor. And it looks like it may uh, actually pass the governor's desk. So good on for Michigan. Um, you know, I wonder if this will help us down the road as some sort of precedent to overturn uh, the you know federal. It's, it, it's crazy because like my whole life like uh, I was born in 1980 not that I remember all these but like R Reagan did a bunch of anti-gun stuff and it just like it, it has always been anti-gun and it wasn't until like later in my life like in 2004 that the, 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 these gun laws actually went away it was like the fr when, when Bush didn't sign the Brady Bill again and it went away that was like we actually gained more some more rights and like for you, for example, where you live, you're starting to gain 
more. It's starting to come around. There's, it's starting to happen, which is you never. I you pro said probably since 1931, you didn't see any gun laws go away. You know, for so for like one of the first ones to start going away, it's pretty amazing. It's probably one of the first gun laws because I mean. Until that, there was none. You could, in 1929, you could go buy a Tommy gun out of like the Sears catalog for 13 well, bucks. Right, well, all the way up to 19 what 64, you could buy it mail order, or you could just buy, walk into a, uh, you know, Walgreens or whatnot and buy it right off the shelf. You need the stamp though. Still. Well, for right, if we're talking SBRs and and that. For machine right, guns, yeah. You, you needed the stamp. Yeah. So which was. Two hundred dollars was a lot back then. It effectively made it illegal, without making it illegal. But and it's and it's still sort of that way with the uh, insane year wait time on some of these uh, stamps. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I mean, at least you're getting them. They could. Th they they don't have to do it at right, all. Right. Right. Things are moving in the right direction in a lot of places. It's only in. Really extreme places like the you know much of the Northeast California, but even in extreme places like Illinois, we're taking some baby steps in the right direction. So, I wonder how that's going to turn out like in the future because clearly some of these states are going to get more and more and more anti-gun. Like I mean, California really shows no sign of stopping, and I, I imagine they're going to go the same way of Australia eventually, no semi-automatics, and then. They could just keep going and going and going, like f cooking frogs. And then other people are actually getting more and more freedoms. I wonder what that's going to look like in the future. Not that that's related to our articles. I'm just throwing that out there for everybody to think about. Yeah, I'm very curious uh, what the landscape is going to look like in America in 10 years. Because, I mean, so much has changed in, what, the last five, six? Oh, man, yeah, absolutely. It, it's it's been kind of underground the changes, um, but 08, of course, everything seemed to change and everything came to a head, good and bad. And you just every time we turn around now, there seems to be any movement at all for or against seems to have ripples that both sides just greatly cling on to and maybe even blow out of proportion. So Dick's Sporting Goods is now discriminating against law-abiding gun owners. So this um, is on uh, freepatriot.org, and it's from uh, a person that's uh, shopping at the Niles, uh, Niles, Illinois, uh, Dick's Sporting Goods. He said, I went to purchase some 308 ammo, and when he... Went to check out. He said they scanned his FOID card and asked him some questions. And the, the FOID card is an Illinois firearms owner's ID card that you have to have to buy ammo or buy a gun. Uh, he says when refusing to answer uh, the questions, they refused to finish the purchase and asked what was up with the third degree. And he sa sa was informed that it was policy, Dick's company policy. And... Uh, when asked to see the policy, he was informed that they didn't have a copy of the policy. <laughs> and, and so the policy is, you know, the, this journalist followed up with Dicks and everything, and the p policy is on rifle ammo purchases. They ask you, um, are you a U.S. citizen? <laughs> what is your date of birth? What is your FOID card number? And then they scan your FOID, your FOID card. So... Like yeah, actually, big, yeah, who cares? I mean, actually, so, like there must be a barcode on the back. Yeah. So, like, okay, are you a citizen? First of all, when they scan your card, do you say they have to scan your card when they have the? Uh... Well, my mine. So, do they make a copy of it? Because mine does not have a barcode on it anywhere. Does it have a magnetic strip? No. No, the new the new hmm. driver's license they can scan. So I wonder if it's a newer. Although I just got this, I renewed this just uh, four years ago, so it's fairly new. Hmm. So, yeah, this is kind of a load of baloney coming from Dix again. The Dix, the company that pulled all their assault rifles after uh, an incident and has not put them back on the shelves. Um, this right. is also a company that... Where did they go, I wonder? That... Um, 
I have I, you know, I've personally been in Dick's Sporting Goods and been treated like garbage on a few occasions, so mm-hmm. I have not gone back. Yeah, it's not. It's really, uh, it's really not a big be- deal. Just don't go to Dick's. You know, there's tons of other places you can get your ammunition from, and if they don't sell any ammunition, then you know the ammunition companies are gonna, you know, they're they're gonna k- keep producing it and sell it to other places. You know, so it's not. It's not. They're just losing money, so it's not really that big of a deal. I so, agree. just go I, somewhere else. I I quit shopping there after the uh, they pulled all the rifles. So they're in Texas as well. Oh yeah, the the closest sporting goods stores to me is is actually a Dick's. I I drive well beyond it just for that reason. Uh, you know, uh, let me let me play the other side just for the purposes of conversation and you know for hate mail. Um, they're a private company; they can do whatever they want. We are cash carrying citizens; we can respond however we want. The three things he was asked is, "Are you a citizen?" Well, if you're not a citizen, the Second Amendment doesn't apply to you. So don't be hollering about, oh, I, I have right. rights. No, you don't. You're not a citizen. Yeah. Secondly, you have to be of a certain age to purchase rifle ammunition. So exactly. the, the asking the question of the age, that is within the realm of reason. And the Foyd card. Now, the Foyd card is not a Texas thing, so I have no idea. If you've got the Foyd card, I would assume you've been vetted. You are a citizen or have the rights to purchase firearms. Right. Clearly, you're of age, so I think the three with a Foyd is ridiculous. If I was asked if I was a citizen, I would I would kind of recoil against that. But asking me my age to purchase ammo, maybe I'm just used to it. And again, yeah. I'm just I'm playing the other side here. Um, it's not an issue, like Peter said. Don't shop at Dicks. I, I don't think, and like I agree with you. I don't think that these are like that out of the realm of like shocking. Like I mean, the, the you know the uh, the. It's it's a kind of annoying when they have headlines like this. Dick Sporting Goods now discriminating against law-abiding gun owners. That's almost like when liberals media put stuff on about assault rifles and it's like, yeah. Yeah. you know, a high point or something. It's, it's, it's the same thing. It's like you were not – you went down to their level. You just you just went full retard. It right. doesn't it doesn't have to be us versus them. It, it can be yeah. what is right versus what is wrong. Exactly. Look, okay. You, I imagine who, when you have your Foyd card, you have to be a certain age to get it. So, it's like they, they, I don't see anything here that they really just asked for the Foyd card, and this guy blew it out there, of control. Jake, are there ages on the Foyd? You know, I don't know that there are. You know, now, I wait g- a minute, back up. We we actually did that show. I'm sorry to interrupt you. We did that show uh, a couple months ago where uh, a a guy in Illinois got his like newborn son a Foyd card. Right, <laughs> he did. Oh. <laughs> did, but there, regardless, sir, I, I don't mind. know for sure. <laughs> you know, I just, I just remembered. Whenever you buy a caliber that could be used in a handgun, the clerk at certain stores would ask me, "Is this for a handgun?" Yeah, they do that at Walmart too, like a twenty-two or. Or they do it in other states too. They ask you. Yeah, if, like a Walmart yeah. will ask that. You, is you this gotta, a, you got to be 21 to buy handgun ammo here in Texas. Okay, yeah, yeah that's the same here. So that's kind of common then. Okay. 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 Well, USSG and EAA to import some 12 gauge AK annihilators, and these these look like um, Chinese made uh, Norinkos. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Yeah, me too. With a receiver. Yeah. So. From some reports I've been seeing uh, is that they're they're claiming that this is a 12 gauge AK that will actually run. Now, uh, riddle me this: I've never shot an EAA. Uh, I see their print ads in the magazines, and they're terrible. So I'm I'm hoping their guns are better than their ads. But uh, you're talking it, about the EAA girls. Y- yes. Yeah. Could we could that, we please that are strangely not that attractive? Exactly, and I, I hate to be that guy here and go ahead and send me more hate mail. But if you're gonna be a gun bunny, could you maybe be a bunny someone would want to look at? Yeah, that's why I stopped getting a Dylan catalog too. For a little bit there, he was yes! like, he was like, I know you have a wife. I understand it, and all. I get it. We, you know, some of y'all are dumb and got married. I get it, but. You don't have to put her in the catalog, all right? And I, I, I know I sound like, and I'm not trying to objectify women. I'm really not. I promise. Oh, yeah. I understand sex sells and all. I, I get all that. I really, really, really do. 
but go ahead and spend the extra 50 bucks for a real model, not one of your employee's girlfriends. Go sorry, to a college I'm, campus. Just go there. I just took us there, didn't I? I'm sorry, Jake. I just, up. I just took us to a bad place. I apologize. Anyways, so the, yeah. these are coming in. Uh, <laughs> um, they're they're uh, it's, it says um, they're going to be available. You know what? I lost my spot. Are they going to be available anytime soon? I don't know. So 93 Clinton banned all Norinco firearms except shotguns from being imported. And hmm. then in 2003, Bush extended that ban to all firearms. So that's why we don't see Norinco things anymore. Um, but apparently these are <laughs> being imported by EAA and um, marketed by Norinco. So. Curious. Yeah, I wonder how they're getting around that. Interesting. So would you would you guys buy a Chinese uh, shotgun rifle? Anything? I China? never buy a gun the first year it comes out, like ever, Whether because they always fix it. it. They always do something. I have before, yeah. and I'm like, man, I wish they just changed it. And the next year, they, I'm like, well, this is stupid. It, it so, sounds like that's the case with the new Remington R51. Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't understand no, what's that's what I, that gun, anyways. Why would it's, Why are people excited about that? I never was excited in the first place. All right, so we. I, I think it. I think it fits a niche. I think it does fit a niche. niche? Uh, I okay. think when I want just the the review so bad, but I, I think a low cost alternative uh, entry level handgun that's not a, you know, uh, it's from a major company, so there there should theoretically be some reliability Ruger. there. Ruger, the Ruger LC. No, yeah, I agree. I, I'm com I'm not arguing with you. I just yeah. I think that's the niche it's playing to. Uh, but as far as your question, Jake, I have no desire for a uh, magazine-fed shotgun, so I, I've never even considered about yeah. one of these. Three gunners are going to be excited about this if it runs better. That's for sure. This is definitely going to be sure. in their neck of the woods. Most people who have Sa Segas or whatever it is, they're just out like shooting cans or whatever in the backyard. Look at this. Right. It's great. But um, the people who actually use it. Um, to the, to its limits, we'll probably be excited to, ha to see a better product coming out, especially something that has a pick rail on it too, which looked very useful. Yeah. So. So we have an interesting error, factory error here from Smith and Wesson. This is on the firearms blog, and uh, someone was sent a Smith and Wesson bodyguard 380 from the factory that has no slide serrations. Serrations. How did, how did how did they get it. how did they get that out? Yeah, I want to know what the uh, the final testing was for that. Yeah, because I know Smith and Wesson always test fires every everything they send out. What? What? How do you miss that? Yeah, but it's cool. But, uh, That'll be like the stamp, like a stamp that's printed upside down or something. Right. Yeah, to the lucky one to the lucky time. guy who got it. Yeah, exactly. I I would hold on to that forever if I was the guy who got it. Yeah, it's like the the baseball card that uh, you know has two two guys on it or something. Right, like it's, yeah. I wonder if things are really. I don't know. It's hard to tell what really is going to be worth something later on. I guess it is a cool, neat little thing, but if it's, I don't know. Oh yeah, I, my, my holding on wouldn't even be for money. It would be for the, the you know obviously the rarity of it and the the stories and you know that kind of thing. All right. So Georgia legislators passed the most extreme gun bill ever. And oh, man, I mean, this mean, is just awesome. Yeah, this is just radical. So Ooh. There, you don't have to get re-fingerprinted to renew a license. Ooh. <laughs> right, it's uh, House Bill 60. Um, they must not pass many uh, bills there in Georgia, House Bill 60. Um so they, it includes, yeah, the removal removal of fingerprinting for renewal of a weapons uh, carry license (WCL), um, among you know a bunch of other things that they strip uh, out of the law. So that you know, overall, this looks really good for uh, the pro gun yeah. side. I mean, I agree. And, the, the, and, and this, you know, back to we were talking a little bit about national trends earlier. You know, we're we're seeing trends like this in a lot of more pro-gun states where we're taking right. these 
onerous restrictions out of the law more and more. Now let me let me say this: there there is one provision in here that I'm really excited about, and I hope it's the one three. I am. It's number three on the list. It's the uh, absolute defense. I, I really in Texas we're dealing with that. Um, you know, you may be criminally justified in the use of handgun or deadly force, but you know they they mama's still gonna sue you, and so you. Uh, uh, you don't have that defense in Texas, and we're working on that in our legislature. And if I read this correctly, I think that's what Georgia's doing. They're going to a, if you are criminally justified, you are automatically civilly justified. And that is exciting. Wow. That's cool. I like the one that says, stating that under a declared state of emergency that all law-abiding gun owners will not have their Second Amendment rights restricted yes. or infringed by executive authority through emergency power protection. That's I awesome. That is, if, isn't if, that called the Katrina Law? Yeah, pretty much. That's awesome. It's like, well, well, what point do you become non-law abiding though? Like, yeah. if it gets complete chaos, and you have to protect your neighborhood or whatever, like, at what point are you like a crazy man shooting people that comes to your neighborhood with a gun, or are you protecting your neighborhood? That's the, the the elastic part there is the law abiding. Yeah. But I guess I they just, if you stay in your house or whatever, they can't take it from you. Yeah. But that's kind of cool. That reminds me of like the road or something cool in that. Maybe <laughs> not quite the don't, road. Don't y'all have that, Peter? Don't y'all have the the quote unquote Katrina law in Louisiana now? Or were y'all talking about that one? That I don't know. I have silencers, so I de facto have that law. Okay. So and I'm a and I'm a master in the art of camouflage as well, so that helps. <laughs> so I kind of have that already. Uh. Here. We'll call that grandfathered in. How's that? Yeah, I grandfathered in. <laughs> All right. Well, law enforcement uh, association is urging sheriffs not to enforce uh, gun control in Vermont. So the Constitutional Sheriffs and Police Officers Association uh, a pr president issued a statement, and they're calling for uh, Vermont sheriffs to refuse to Enforce the new uh, measures that were passed earlier in the month. So well, they're elected, right? So like, if they don't do it, then they stand to be not unelected. So it really is up to them, right? Right. Well, we've seen the same thing in Colorado with the magazine ban, and and uh, mm -hmm. we've seen the same thing in New York. What almost every county in New York, uh, the sheriff stood up against. Uh, the uh, new uh, Safe Act, and uh, except for you know the Manhattan and you know New York itself, New York, New York City itself. So uh, it's a trend we're seeing uh, all over the U.S. as well. Yeah. Well, it makes sense. I mean, you know, sheriffs are, are like you said, Peter. They're elected, so they're quite possibly a little more. Common sense oriented. Mm -hmm. I agree. All right. Well, uh, move on to the next story, Keith. Well, if it's a, what if it's a? Fe hold on, before you move on. If it's like a federal law that goes in, they have to follow that, right? No, no. So I mean, some of these states are like Idaho, just passed a, a law nullifying federal... Uh, yes. Constitutionally speaking, this is actually what I teach for a living. Constitutionally speaking, Peter, yes, there's the supremacy clause of the Constitution. So if you're actually talking about what the law says, yes, federal Trump state. But a lot of states are passing, like Jake was saying, uh, Texas is uh, on the verge of passing a we will not enforce these laws. Law, so it's really going to come down to, hey, if this is a federal issue, let federal enforcement enforce it. We're not. So Representative Keith Ellison says, "I wish Democrats would come out against the Second Amendment." So this was on uh, during HBO's Real Time with Bill Maurer. Uh, Minnesota's Representative Keith Ellison said he wishes Democrats would come out against in opposition to the Second Amendment. I watched. Did y'all watch the video clip of this? I did. What? What? Go ahead, Joe. I, I just all I saw was the clip. Um, 
you know, yeah, Marr has made a career out of being that guy. I mean, he's the he's the American version of Pierce Morgan. He he pushes the buttons because it gets viewers. Period. And in the comment, he's he's kind of really pushing these uh, these politicos. Why doesn't someone in your department? And this guy made this comment almost kind of a. Uh, yeah, I wish they would. Just kind of one of those, yeah, yeah, I hear what you're saying kind of things. And uh, we have made a storm out of this. No one has called out Bill Maher for saying it. We've merely you know, called out this Keith Ellison guy. And it's it's TV, and if you sit and watch TV and believe it, then you know, it doesn't really matter what the truth is to you. Right, right. So and there you go. They, uh, on that clip, they also talked about... Um, I, I, Bill Maher almost went as far as saying that we should outlaw all guns. I think he was going that far. Well, he he specifically yeah. asked repeal the Second Amendment. <laughs> right. I mean, they're, they're, right. that's not that's not kind of all guns. That's all guns. That's crazy. Right. And I, I really like the lady. Right. Did y'all did y'all notice the lady in there? She uh, well, I'm a Democrat or she, I'm a Republican. I'm conservative, and I like these common sense measures. Right. Common sense yeah. gun. Laws, common sense, gun control. The Democrats are just as bad as Republicans, yeah. and the Republicans are just. Yeah. Bad. Thank you. If you think Obama's the problem, and it'll yeah. be over when he's You're gone, you don't understand the problem. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's that's something we're not talking about this week. Uh, the New Jersey uh, gun, uh, excuse me, magazine ban. You know, taking it down to ten round limit. They have a fifteen round limit, and now. Um, did that pass, or was that just a bill? That that's uh, going to show up on uh, Governor Christie's desk, and you know he's one of the guys that the Republicans are looking at running. So, yeah. you know that that's uh, a pretty big. Now I think Governor Christie is pretty anti-gun, anyways. But you know that's a big decision for him to make. And um, you're right. I mean, you know, Hillary Christie. Hmm. I mean, can you give me poop on a stick or something? You know, there's a, I mean, there's a there's a there's a interesting thing about that little white speck on top of chicken shit. It's chicken shit too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not supposed to curse on the show. Oh, I'm sorry, Jake. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> well, let me write the timestamp down. <laughs> I'm I'm really you're right. I'm sorry. My bad. My apologies. I'm so, professional. So it may be a good thing, though, if they come out, you know, if they start saying what they actually believe, you know, instead yep. of mo most of them saying, oh, I'm all for the Second Amendment. Look at me. I go duck hunting. You know, look at me in my blaze orange vest. You know, I'm, I, I actually see a deeper ugly here. There was a time recently when no one would have dared even consider saying that. And now, yeah, I agree. It's on the fringes. It's people like Mar, but that's exactly where these movements come from. They come from the fringes of one side or the other, and the fact that it's now part of the national conversation, even in fringes, that it's even up for debate about repealing an amendment, especially a Bill of Rights amendment. That doesn't have to deal with getting rid of a ban on alcohol, because that was cool when they repealed that one. But yeah, now, the, the, honestly, the, cra the crazier they talk, I mean. I, you know, the better it is for us, though. I, I agree with that. I do. I do. But I'm I'm saddened by the fact that uh, because that they this already, has even come they already up in the national conversation. Right, but they already they believed this for decades. You know, they've wanted. Yeah, but my point is now they're willing to say it, and right. that means and, that means things are getting extreme, as if well, they weren't already. I know, but maybe they're and they're. At last, you know, they're in their death row, you know. Maybe, or, maybe. You know, maybe, maybe. I don't know. It, it, it's hard to say. I, I'm just really glad the uh, uh, amendments don't change easily, and it takes we the people to do it. Right. So let's uh, go back to uh, the Truth About Guns article about uh, Scott Blackwell, president of marketing and sales for Remington, resigns. So less than two years after uh, the Freedom Group hired him, um, he's um, leaving, and uh, there are rumors that he was fired in a meeting. Mm -hmm. 
So does anyone think this has to do with the recent failures of the R51? I think it has more to do with the fact that Big Green has been hemorrhaging cash for the last two years. I mean, they, they in what should be the most amazingly easy time to sell guns ever, Remington, <laughs> is, Remington is losing market share. And that, that, you know, that falls right on your shoulders, Mr. President of Marketing and, share and Sales. Yeah. Yeah, the man didn't do his job, got fired, I think is all that's really there. I just, I've... I mean, the, uh, yeah, you definitely cannot, in this day and age, you cannot come up with a gun that's a failure. You absolutely cannot. There's at the uh, Right now, there's like I was talking about earlier before the show, every type of firearm has been advanced so far from, even from when I'm, I'm 33, when I was 18, to starting to buy guns, even in that short period of time, yeah. the, the advances are crazy. If you wanted a really good precision rifle, you needed to have some wizard build one. And if you wanted, like, uh, whatever, like, like a really fast gun, you would need to have somebody build it. And all of these things you'd have to do. But nowadays, they come out of the box like that. And if you co come out with a gun out of the box that doesn't even work, and your name is Remington, yep. you are fired, dude. There's the door out. I don't, I, that, I don't know if that's exactly what went down. It well, could have been. You think, but. It's, you think it's just the R51 that did it to him? But well, all the other stuff, too. It's like, you have to be competitive. Like, nobody wants an AR rifle made by Remington, and they're, they're really, they were just living off their bolt guns. Like, I can't think of one Remington gun I'd really actually want. And the shotgun technology has gone crazy, and the, the Remington shotguns really haven't kept up that much either compared to the Benelli's or the Winchester's or the, you know... Now, there are ones. They're 1911s. I've, I've heard kind of a mixed bag review on those, too. It's like they're, an, they're another empty. 1911. It's like inviting another black dude to a million man march. Whatever. There's a million dudes making 1911s. Who cares? Unless yours is the bomb because your company's named Remington, like, the only people who are going to buy are people who have brand loyalty to you. And to have brand loyalty to a 1911, I mean, there's tons of companies making them. I it would be impossible. We we could spend five hours naming all the companies who are making yeah. 1911s right now. So, I mean, what's so special about theirs that like some other companies not doing nothing? You know, so they're, they're just like they're dead. Like, yeah. Well, I, let's they, let's, let, let's talk about what's hot for market share. It's it's ARs and pretty much any polymer gun or any well, concealed I, carry gun. And yeah. Remington is. Has not delved very deeply into right. the market. So well, AR-15s, they, they they dip their toe in, but they're only marketing towards the hunters, hunters, right? Yeah. And, and who is going to buy a Remington AR, knowing full well all you're doing is paying three hundred dollars more than you should for a Bushmaster? Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, at least it's not a Daniel Defense where you're spending like a thousand more for so they can put Super Bowl ads up. <laughs> Wow, Peter. What about Daniel? Well, yeah. Yeah. Here, here goes my ad, uh, my ad uh, aspirations or sponsor oh. aspirations. I'm sorry. Is that our sponsors? I, 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 lo I have three Remingtons, and they're all 700 bolt actions. Yeah, that's uh, the thing they made their. That's what they made off of for forever. You know what I mean? But now a lot of people are going to these cheaper ones. I, when I say to people. This is I'm I'm in a precision I shoot precision rifle and people always come to me hey I want to start shooting precision rifle what should I do I would say well get a Remington 700 in 308 because it's a cheap round you can learn wind really good with it and there's a lot of parts for it standard and I always hear this well I heard Remington's not doing too good anymore and what about this other cheap gun from like wherever yeah. I'm like well it'll work that cheap gun will work you know what I mean it's you know mm -hmm. you may want to get a better optic but it will work. You know, well, so, look at Ruger. They, they came out with their American line, and uh, you know my wife was really considering one of those for her first deer rifle. Was the the Ruger American because of the the budget price for a known brand, fairly quality, entry level bolt action. Yeah, I mean a lot of the I, that's what I'm saying is it used to be where Remington 700 was the standard by which all were measured, but now yep. it's like they're all there. You mean yeah. like you, well, what Savage can build a rifle for like 300 dollars that shoots one away out of the box? Right. right. You don't need a wizard to do it anymore. Here it is. So Remington, what have you done? It's kind of like HK. What have you done lately? All right. Yeah, you made the MP5. That was cool. That was like 50 years ago. All right. Your your UMP is horrible. Your USP is horrible. Your 
G36 is horrible compared to everything else that's around it. Like, what have you done lately, Remington? What have you done? You mean, and then on top of that, you're going to come out with the R51? Come on. Well, and the, the ironic thing is that th this gun's a remake. I mean, they they, yeah. they made it before and it worked. So That's the one that has the rotating barrel, if I'm correct, right? Isn't the rotation of the barrel that unlocks it from the round? I think that's how that works. Now, Jake, you played with one at shot, didn't you? I did, and it, the, the slide was very gritty and uh, kind of hard to pull back, and those are... Similar reviews of the ones that are, are coming in now. There's there's a actually a video embedded in the story of um, the YouTuber. Um, what's his name? Yeah, I saw the video. I think everybody Mil has it. Military Arms Channel. Yep, where, yep. Yeah. He got one in, uh, and the rear sight just you can push it out with your finger. It's it's so not, all of y'all's all of y'all's fears at uh, range day at shot were pretty confirmed. They said that they wouldn't let anyone go live with the 51 at range day. Yeah, the, uh, mysteriously the R51 was not at media day at the range, even though select media members had shot it back in December. So mm. I I and they all gave raving reviews on it. So now I'm of curious. Are the, were those guns back in December overly refined, and now we're seeing the ones roll off the factory floor or crap? Or or, or the were these? Did these guys know where their bread and butter was, and they're not going to give a bad review to Big Green's gun because Big Green and Ruger and Taurus are the only advertisers in most gun magazines now? I I I'm guessing it was a combination of both, but I yeah. Don't know. Okay. I've never shot one, so man, they they may be awesome, and you know, it, maybe maybe we've just seen a couple of lemons come out. So, uh, you know, the wait is over. A special edition double barreled 1911s from Arsenal Arms are on their way. Now, Jake, I know for a fact when I first started listening to you, you were clowning on this gun two years ago at shot. Right, I was. I think that was the first Gun Guy radio episode I released. I, I, I've, I've been a fan for it. a while, yeah. It, I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> wow. I I don't even understand the novelty of this. But but wait, but wait, it gets better. It has a I, I can't even talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> it has a black magic black magic uh, black on black as they call it. Uh, <laughs> Dude, this uh, thing, this thing better come with Santana personally playing guitar while <laughs> shooting it. So it has a um, black magic uh, enhanced surface finish. It's promising improved performance um, in addition to sleek new looks. Now, honestly, if if at a at a glance, if you took away the stupidity of the double barrel, if this was a standard, you know, normal human being 1911, it's it's not a bad looking gun. I no, like that. Not. I like that matte grip on the, the you know that skeletonized trigger. I, I hate that hammer, but you know, if it was a normal 1911, that's not an unattractive gun. Yeah. Well, and speaking of slides that are hard to pull back, try pulling this one back. <laughs> oh, I bet. I bet. So, does it have does it have like two eight pound mainsprings in it, or are they both you know big twelve, fifteen, eighteen pound trigger springs or uh, mainsprings? You know, I, I I don't know, but it, it is a bear to pull that slide back. I can tell uh, you that firsthand. Oh, I bet. I, again, I don't I don't even see the novelty of it. Uh, and regard, you know, needless to say, it weighs a ton, a ton, and I, I was holding an unloaded version. Now, what does it, what does it tell you, uh, Strike One, that uh, a, a, you know, a redneck from Texas looks at this and says, "No, nah, that's stupid." Well, I, I bet they'll sell some. It's very interesting. They're also offering them in 38 Super, which I found interesting. Oh, really? Yeah. So you can pay two grand for the uh, the firearm and the ammunition. Nice. Well, they're saying they they actually have a price now six thousand to seven thousand no, dollars. Sign oh, me up. Six. Th oh my gosh. And I was all, guessing it too. They're also bringing their Strike Ones uh, in, and they're bringing a limited run of um, 
alloy framed strike ones that are uh, 70, 75 aircraft aluminum, and they're only running a hundred of these off the line. But but Jake, it comes in Tiffany blue. I know. I, I'm telling you, let's. So what happened here is someone looked at a Glock and said, "How can we make Glock even uglier, but not quite as ugly as a High Point?" Who, you know, who cares about some... ugly? You talk about how nice the gun looks, how ugly the gun looks. It's a gun, dude. It's not a purse, not a pair of shoes. If you don't buy a gun because it's like ugly, I mean, come on, what do you? Stop talking about that. You could drive me crazy. You make okay. me come over there and choke slam you. All right. <laughs> don't make me come through the thing. Who cares if it's ugly? Is it functional? Look at how high the bore axis is. Why don't you bench it? It's the first thing you look at it. I'm like, wow, you could really get your hand up there. You're like, no, it's ugly. Yeah, come it's on, got man. it's got one of the know. lowest bore axes. Bore axis. Look at that. Do you know what there. that's gonna be like? The shoot, it's gonna be epic. I can't believe the same company that makes this crap gun makes this awesome gun at the bottom. It drives me. It's well, I hope it's awesome, but no. I, you know, I've tried the triggers at these at the last two shot shows, and the trigger was horrendous. So yeah. I, they I could don't know. they could fix triggers though. You get trigger jobs done. They're really That's not true. that expensive. That's true, yeah. but these I saw somewhere else where these are going to retail for some crazy dollar amount as well. Yeah, well, never mind that then. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm like, why not produce a polymer version of these at a, a Glock price, and they might get some market share, because you're right, it does have a very low bore axis. Uh, it has a falling locking block action, so that the barrel does not tilt like in a Glock or oh, that's cool. modern uh, pistol. So that's what allows for the lower bore axis. But uh, I don't know, but. I tell you, uh, you know, gun maker uh, Arsenal Arms, they may uh, be after a very, very, very niche market here. Yeah. Do they do they do anything else, um, Arsenal? They do. I think they do some fancy side by side shotguns and stuff like that. All right. Yeah, I think they're. That's probably what they were originally into. That high end. No matter what, I think they were into the high end market. So. Um, Poland's, um, oh, wait, 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 I'm way off here. Yeah. Ninth, Ninth Circuit. Ninth Circuit Court uh, upholds San Francisco's <laughs> gun storage law. So uh, San Francisco has a gun storage law that has, um, the gun has to be in a safe or has to have a trigger lock on it or you have to, you know, have it, and a holster on your person if you have a license to carry. And um, they have uphold that because it burdens only the manner in which a person may exercise your Second Amendment rights. The regulation more closely resembles a content-neutral speech restriction that regulates only the time, place, or manner of speech. The record indicates that a modern gun safe may be opened qu quickly. So just because you can quickly open a safe you can't sleep with it on your nightstand next to you. Okay. Reason 9,000 why I don't live in California. Oh, how could they prove that, though? I guess they could. If you actually had to use it, they would they would try and nail you. Yeah. What? Well, yeah. There, there, there was actually a case in... Um, this is in Canada, but Canada, California. Um, <laughs> where, where a guy, um, there, there's like these guys that were firebombing his house, basically, and he grabbed his gun out of the safe. I think it was even, it was a cross room or another room, and the ammo, you know, the gun has to be locked up there, the ammo has to be locked up separate, and so on. And so he, he grabbed the gun and defended his home, and then he's defending himself in court for years, and one of the things that, he had to prove was that he didn't get his, get to his gun too quickly. They thought he got to his gun too quickly, so it must not have been locked up. Apparently, they've got a uh, ban in San Francisco on hollow points as well. Yeah, that's right. They can't. You can possess hollow points, but you can't 
you can't buy them or sell them within the city limits of San Francisco. Okay, so if I bought them outside the city limits, the incorporated city, and use them as my self-defense round, that would be fine. But right. okay, I just can't go to Wally World and and buy them. Okay. Right. So, yeah, I, I'm with you. Put that on my list of places not to go. Um, so we're into a little lighter side of the news stories, and uh, there's a giant space gun rusting away in Barbados. Yes, there is. It, which is awesome. I love abandoned things, and this is just right on my alley. So this was from a, <sighs> a, a project called HARP, High Frequency... No, and, the other High Altitude Research Project. Oh, High Altitude Research Project. Excuse me. So this this was a project back in what the 60s, 1962. Yeah, early 60s. Yeah. Like Space this race. is so like out of um, James Bond. James Bond or like like this was a, this was you know on an island, so it makes me think of Lost or something, something <laughs> crazy like that. So this was a 65 foot long naval gun. It was a 16 inch naval cannon that was converted to the 65 foot long. Uh, monstrosity, and uh, no, 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 no. That's that's when it started. Okay, yeah, there you go. Oh, I was gonna say that's what they started that. out, and then they extended yeah. it to 130 feet, and it started out as a 50 caliber, but they expanded it to 100 caliber. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> the whole basis for this was they were trying to shoot um, tiny what uh, satellites into space. Right. Yeah, like little thing of They were yeah, they were testing the feasibility of doing such a thing, yeah. And so it was like a sabot style round that had like this mm -hmm. uh, this protective, you know, sabot type outer hull that protected the inside satellite or whatever it was. And they're trying to shoot these into orbit. Like like just like no one said this is crazy. How are you going to shoot a, a a thing that you know, is packed with gunpowder into orbit. Yep. Now the 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 inventor what Gerald Bull, he uh, he's got an interesting backstory. If anybody wants to go check on him, uh, I've actually for other reasons have studied him before. Yeah, you know, the damn Israeli commandos took him out. He was assassinated by Israel. Well, it was interesting because the the project. Um, Fell apart in the in the later mid '60s, mm -hmm. and then uh, he went to work for Saddam Hussein yep. to build another cannon similar to the ones built with Harp. I, I wonder if that cannon was going to shoot into space. I I'm curious. <laughs> well, you know, Saddam is the leader in space exploration. Right, he was. Um, but sadly, he was assassinated with a regular sized gun in 1990. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you said. <laughs> You said the Israelis took him out. Yeah, it, it was. Uh, there's a lot of evidence that the Israelis did it, because it, it, it. One of the chief things is it happened. He's assassinated. He's found there in the doorsteps of his apartment, and uh, shot five times in the back of the head. And before, I mean, the body is still on the ground. Israel is on the news talking about Iran did it. <laughs> right. Of course. Now I, you know, I'm not, I'm not anti-Israeli or anti-Semitic or anything. It just, it was the Israeli commandos that took him out. That's, I, I'm not putting a value on it. I'm sure they thought they had a reason to, but he's, he's got an interesting life, this guy. But it's, it is kind of just that weird story. I mean, this thing is yep. still down in Barbados, rushing away. I'm sure you could walk right up to it, and it's just bizarre. So. A man jailed for 15 years robs the same store awesome. one day after he was released from prison. <laughs> the same store. So this guy went away 15 years ago for robbing a children's shoe store, of all places. Um, Those at, were some really good shoes. At knife point, he robbed it and forced the lone employee into the back of the store, tied her up, and fled when a second employee entered. Like, he didn't even do a good job robbing the place the first time. He ran away. <laughs> <laughs> and so 15 years later, he took a bus right back to the same store. And here's a funny... This is great. ...ironic thing. I mean, this is crazy. 
He walked <laughs> in, and the same worker that he tied up was working the counter and recognized him when he came through. That's just awesome. But he was the manager this time. He has right. been a manager in 15 years. That's where he went. That's where, awesome. where is this? I have to see. Where is it? This is... So, so yeah, he was... New he, Jersey? He robbed the store a second time. <laughs> He fled, and then police found him uh, a little while, while later. He made off with a huge amount of, uh, you know, three hundred eighty-six dollars and several cell phones. So, you know, he was on the up, you know, on his way up, right? But now he's in the county jail with a hundred thousand dollar bail. So, what are we thinking here? Is this guy was this guy like institutionalized and deliberately trying to get back in, or? Just really extra stupid. Well, I, I mean, obviously the yeah. rehabilitation process did not did, work. I mean, they had. I think well, he yeah, clearly. Fifteen years to, to go back. Yeah, fifteen years to rehabilitate this guy, and he uh, did not take. I mean, maybe he's a little bit mental as well. Yeah, yeah he yeah. doesn't. He looks a little. Yeah. I don't know, a little off there. I'm like, is this uh, is this a version of like? Um, Groundhog's Day for the criminal, like you wake up the same day and you rob the same store. And right. I, <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, this really shows the, the failing, though, of, I think, the prison system. I, I, you, know, you, you know, the recidivism rate is so high, uh, and not, not just for crimes like this, but for violent crimes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and murder and everything that here's here's something crazy that now that you're on the subject and I want to get too far off is that Louisiana has like the highest incarceration rate in on planet earth well the US does the US has the highest yes. rate so if you go by if you go google or wikipedia whatever incarceration rate by country america's like i think it's 700 and some odd Per 716 people per 100,000, right? Wow. So if we go incarceration rate by country, uh, well, we, this is something that needs to be said. Here we go. It's this. Here we go. So we're at the top of the list. Bring up Wikipedia. It's slow now because I'm talking. 716, yep. So we're at the, and the second one is a co country called Selchilis or whatever. Was seven hundred nine. Saint Kitts is seven hundred one. All right. So if we were to go back, all right. I'm, this is where we go. I'm gonna see. This is the. Everybody play this game in your heads. Here we go. So I'm just gonna give you this. Alabama is number two at seven hundred thirty-five. Right. People yeah. per hundred thousand are in jail. Seven hundred thirty-five. Does anybody want to guess what Louisiana is? 800. More. Wow. More? Jake? Jake? More? A thousand? More. Wow. Wow. I'll give you a hint. It is more than double Alabama. Wow, man. So 1,500? More. Okay, so it's a lot. 1,619 people per every... That's... 1.6 of the populations in jail. And and what and just guesstimating what percentage of that is uh, non-violent offenders? I wonder. I don't know. I tried to find a correlation between education or or between like poverty or between even race, and I couldn't really find a correlation that like went with the rest. So I don't know. I've got one for you. Let me, let, me, down here. let me let me add one to you there. Isn't um, that crazy? The U.S. Department of Justice looks at fourth grade reading scores to determine where future prisons need to be built. Absolute true fact. It could be education, but I didn't see find it. I mean, now, it, obviously Wikipedia, that's your go-to source for all things academic, but I, I'm telling you for yeah. a fact, DOJ looks at fourth. Uh oh, I think we lost them. So let's Boom. move on to, yeah, uh, on to the next one. <laughs> Rhode Island State Senator Josh Miller to a Second Amendment supporter. He says, go F yourself. <laughs> uh, 
Now, there's a video here that uh, you'll have to watch, but uh, yeah, this Rhode Island uh, senator uh, was being uh, questioned about the Second Amendment uh, by this you know, guy doing the video. This he does like some radio show, but um, some crazy internet radio show, uh, Truth Radio, yeah. <laughs> hosted by Dan Bidoni. So, it, and this you know was in a public setting and and yeah so the state senator just says you know go f yourself and then his cameraman does the same thing that's awesome like i i mean i i'm not a clearly i'm not a politician obviously but <laughs> I, you would think that like like they are normal people like I, I know there's there's nobody out here who doesn't cuss. Maybe it's a couple people, right? But is it that much of the constituency that if you curse, that they won't vote for you again? Like, is it really that many people out there that are so offended by a senator cursing that they won't vote for him? Like, well, I don't think it's a, the really the act of the cursing, but it's his attitude. I yeah, mean, well, that too. It's his. Yeah. I mean, he's he's a public servant. He's supposed to be serving this guy, you know, and and not. Uh, you know. He's a human too, so I mean. And yeah. the uh, the radio show guy did kind of I don't say ambush him. That's way too strong a word, but he wasn't exactly looking for an interview. He was looking for a confrontation. He was. Yep. And he he got it. It was totally, like, but, but but people are <laughs> confronting. You know, and maybe it was the last straw for this guy. But people are yeah. confronting this guy all the time. But you know, this guy. I, it seems like he would have said this to any Second Amendment supporter. <laughs> yeah, I, you're probably right. Absolutely. Yeah. Clearly, this is a man worthy of holding office. Right. Yeah. The, in the comments to this, um, you know, some people are saying, uh, "Hey, Senator, Senator, you want to get reelected? Go f yourself." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you don't want to. That's another thing. It's like if, if you're if we're gonna go about it. Like being all pro two uh, A, which is a cool thing that people say now. So it's kind of like this cool little secret club I'm in. Don't be like Michael Moore and just run to people all disheveled and be like, "Oh, I'm gonna interview." It's like what? Like right. maybe if you like, or if Alex you came presentable, or you weren't like totally gonna twist everything that was being said. Right. You know what I mean? So like the same way, like if if they're doing it, you can't do it. Don't say, "Oh, Dick Sporting Goods is." Come on, dude. You know that's not what's happening. They just literally ask you for your card, and that was it. And to make sure you're old enough. Like, pump your brakes a little. Stop being an idiot. You know. And that's, that's and that's kind of have to say to, to this dude. It's kind of cool that dude did that to him. I think it's kind of neat. But even that's though, like we were talking about with Kristen, Kristen Joy Weiss a little earlier. You know, we, we need a lot more level-headed ambassadors. Less reactionary yeah, ambassadors. Exactly. Like you shouldn't be sending me to do anything. That's clear. S send her. Or somebody. Who, she probably doesn't curse. Who knows? What? Well, I mean, right. It doesn't do us any good to make us look more like the gun nuts that they think yeah. us that we are. Yeah. Or they think we are. And so, that's what. Like with the NRA. Come on, get with the program. Like, don't, don't, stop sending me emails, dude, at like midnight about your DVD. Okay, stop. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I'm not gonna watch your DVD, all right? Because I know it's crazy. I got. I got a phone call from them this afternoon asking for a donation. Yeah, stop it. Like, make some cool videos. Like, it's out there. People are doing it on their own right now. Follow it. Go, go into the future. Don't fall. Like, don't be HK or Remington. All right. Be like the people that are forward thinking out there. Anyway. Like, like MS Clean. Yeah, like MS Clean or like the Italian <laughs> company you're making. So. So. So people uh, have the right to certain weapons, uh, according to a school workbook that rewrites. That's right, the school workbook that was given out, and oh yeah, my home state of Illinois was given out to a seventh grader in Springfield. Um, redefines the Second Amendment. It redefines it. Uh, yeah, a little, a little bit different than it's actually written. A little bit. Yeah. So it says, this amendment states that people have the right to certain weapons, providing that they register them and they have not been in prison. The Founding Fathers included this amendment to prevent the United States from acting like the British who tried to take weapons away from the colonists. 
And that's all it says. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it, right? You don't have to register most firearms. <laughs> you, 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 you want me to weigh in on this one? <laughs> yeah, go for it. You're the educator here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, this comes from McGraw-Hill Publishing, and there's about nine really big... Uh, curriculum publishers, McGraw Hill is one of them, yeah, and they they are notoriously anti what you and I value. Um, I I have actually uh, worked with them a couple of times on reviewing future books and you know potential published books. And first thing I do on every one is I go to the Second Amendment. What does it say? And they're they're notoriously this way. It's tragic. It's sad. It's indoctrination. It, there's no other way to put it other than propagandizing our youth. But uh, just be aware, parents. This is what your kids are learning. And I I'm a public school teacher. I'm not. I'm I'm certainly not um, above the fray myself here. But uh, parents, be aware of what your kids are learning. Right, because we are the primary educators of our children, not the school, not the teacher, not the school district. We are. Jake, would you come and be a guest speaker at my school, please? <laughs> uh, for for a lot of us, it seems to be that we are merely free daycare. Right, babysitters, of course. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's the ultimate. This is tragically not surprising. And that is why uh, my wife and I are homeschooling. Uh, y y you know, and again, I, I'm a public school educator, and I, I, uh, I'm sure a lot of our listeners are aware of uh, Markle and, and his podcast, and he and I have politely, civilly gone round and round on this because he's, he's staunchly anti-public education. And I promise you yeah, guys, me we, too. We, we are trying, I promise. There's a lot of good teachers out there who, I mean, I, you probably can't see it, but I have We the People tattooed on my on my forearm here, uh, there's a lot of us that really do believe in what made this country great, and we really are trying to pass it on to your kids. Um, it's unfortunately it's the 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 kooky birds that that make all the press. It's not the 98 percent of our, or let's say 90 percent of us, who are just really working hard every day, loving our kids, trying to teach them. Right, and my my wife is actually a teacher, and um, until we had children, and now she's. <sighs> Barefoot and pregnant all the time, <laughs> but uh, I, you know, I think I think part of the big problem is that a lot of these schools that put out teachers, a lot of these colleges, universities, that oh, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. train teachers, the the, the yeah. you know professors there are just nuts. They're anti-gun and just nuts. A lot of them. Yep. Yeah. I I completely concur. I I absolutely concur with you. And uh, we actually have a huge influx, at least down here. I, I couldn't speak to any other area, but we have a huge influx in the last uh, six years with the downturn of the economy. A lot of people who were in private sectors, you go and take six weeks worth of training at night and on weekends, and suddenly, congratulations, you're a certified educator. And so great, you worked at 3M or you know Dow Chemical for 10 years, so suddenly you think you're a teacher. And uh, yeah, it's... Uh, the Jake, it, really, I, I attack it the same way you attack being in Illinois. Uh, I, I used to question you, why don't you just move, man? Just move. Come to Texas where it's free and it's a republic. And But uh, I've really kind of adopted your attitude towards it. There's a lot of me that would like to get out of public education, but if I do, that's, that's that many fewer students are going to hear the truth at least one period of the day. Are you even allowed to tell the truth? Uh, I, yeah. Well, again, Peter, I'm in I'm in Texas, bro. So we're you know. Okay. We're we're just short of having a you know, prayer before class every morning. Yeah. I think but, you'd be uh, in a lot of trouble in a lot of other places. But I I choose to be aware of it, and I tell my and again I teach upper level high school, so I'm having different yeah. conversations. But I, I choose to tell my students, okay, here's the curriculum. Now let Joe talk to you for a minute. This is what I think. You make up your own mind. Gosh, I'd almost, I'd almost go back to high school just to have you as a teacher. <laughs> oh, thank you. I, I, I work really, my goal is to make kids want to be history teachers when they leave my class. We are my an amazing. My partner is a history teacher. So there you go. All right. I didn't know you had a partner. <laughs> yeah. Business partner. I, I wasn't going to judge. I would never have a real partner because I don't get in relationships. 
I, I wasn't going to judge you. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, Poland's futuristic invisible stealth tank. This is on my <laughs> Christmas list now. Unfortunately, it's not going to be out till 20, what, 2022? Okay, well, at least they have a tight timeline. Poland, realistically, you're not going to really fight and win any war against anybody near you, so you should probably just stop making tanks altogether. All right, I mean, really, who are you going to... You saw how that turned out. Like, who's Poland going to fight? Russia. Well, yeah, it's not going to turn out well. They're, they're, they're busy in the Ukraine right now. Yeah, I think tanks kind of are, like, going to fall by the same wayside as, like, battleships. They're kind of, like, useless. Like, why... Like, why would you have one even? What does it really do? The the gun on the tank mainly is designed to shoot at other tanks or vehicles, but now you have, like, a lot more air superiority and things like that and handheld things that could destroy tanks very easily. I just think that, like, the, you can see a whole lot less Abrams and more other things going on. Now, let me let me ask you this, Peter, because this is way your world. Uh, we just got out of my world. That's education, but I, I simply do not have a lot of military knowledge. Is, is that is that you, the Marine, speaking, uh, or is that you as a soldier who's seen combat speaking? I was uh, Marines. Y'all don't do a lot of tanks and artillery and stuff. No, they have tons of tanks and artillery. They, they I thought y'all were move fast, kick ass, and get out of the way. No, they have. T we have tons of tanks and tons of artillery and all that stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, so again, um, I, I don't know what I'm talking about. So I it's just to like. It's, you know, they, it's depending which war you're fighting. They're not very useful in this war. You mean you're not really shooting a lot on vehicles, you know what I mean? So it's kind of okay. this big lumbering thing that if it goes off into a canal and flips upside down, you draw, everybody drowns to death. There's like a saying, tanks don't go where the cattails grow. You know what I mean? Okay. So it's, like, it's a vehicle where if it's marshy or whatever, you don't want to go there because one, it'll sink or two, you, you know... There have been tanks that flipped upside down or broken over a bridge, and then it's it. So, like, to have that big gun's not really a, uh, doesn't really help you out that much. I'm sure there's a lot of tankers out there that are going to be like, no, no, we need, we need them because you're indoctrinated and you like that. But, like, it's kind of like the way of mortars, too. We kind of just don't use those weapon systems anymore. We have things that, like, either wars changed a little bit, or um, and it's not very useful in a guerrilla war or the wars we're fighting. And a tank, really, nowadays, at least somebody who's fighting us, is just a giant target. It's like something in A-10 to shoot at or all these cool laser-guided, wow. whatever guided things we got. You're really just sitting in a giant target. I mean, look at the Iraq War. Okay. Even so to, a, to a, a big target. To an armchair you know, guy like myself, I've never been in combat, never never served or anything like that. It, you know, I watch it on TV in the military channel. Tanks seem like the fist of God. No, I mean, not really. You can have armored vehicles that you can have a lot of people in, and it really, because a tank okay. it doesn't offer you much protection unless you're inside of it. It doesn't hold a lot of people. You know, okay. so, I mean, what does it do that a helicopter can't do? Okay. It, so. Uh, again, I defer to you. I'm not arguing that one with you at all. And, uh, you know, and that's a, some people say there will always be tanks, and some people say that the tank stays are numbered. Now, I'm, I'm with the tank stays are numbered people. Okay. But who knows? Well, Poland, luckily, is going to the next level. They've got the tank yeah. 2.0 now. That exactly. That's why they had horses. Players. When They had horses the last time the Germans rolled in. So, I mean, now they got tanks. When the Germans roll in with whatever they're going to have this time, spaceships or something. There you so, go. So the, the, this makes me think, uh, two of our conversations kind of come together here in the latest um, and last, unfortunately, last Tom Clancy book, uh, Command Authority, where th this, I think it's the Ukraine this takes place in, but it's just exactly what's going on in Crimea right now, exactly what's going on over there with, with Russia. Uh, he laid out in this book that he probably wrote a couple of years ago because this came out in yeah. this, this December. But there's a lot of um, tank stuff in there, and, and, and st like you said, Peter, about... Uh, them taking out tanks with laser guided or you know choppers and stuff like that quick moving uh, choppers and then attack choppers and it re really cool um, military strategy um, so you know check out command authority that's just my little sideline here really good stuff but you know this a futuristic tank it it's has some pretty cool stuff you know it has um, armor plating that will uh, change the tank's 
temperature to mask that of its surroundings so that you can't see it in infrared. Wow. It, it, it's, um, it's stealth so it doesn't show up on radar. It, the turret, turret is unmanned. It's all computer controlled and, and auto loading and everything like that uh, for even the main gun. So I, all that's pretty cool. But again, it doesn't come out until like 20... I think the video said 2022. Wow. So like we're like almost 10 year, you know, 8 years out, you know, and and you know, how is air superiority going to evolve during that time and stuff mm -hmm. is this going to be obsolete by then? I don't know, Peter, will we ever fight a conventional war again? I mean, eventually, I'm sure it will happen. I mean, I mean, when, when, when we're when still they need enough money. Stuff. While we're still the United States, you know, if we're the former United States, then, you know, obviously society's broken down. This but. is what I've said before, and I'll say it again. When, you know, like, if there's another depression or if there, if, what happens if there's a depression and people lose all of their assets because they have nothing, so then the government or the banks buy it all up, right? Well, then they need people to make more money to make more money off of them, so they'll start a war. That's right. how it goes. So after the next Great Depression or something like that, then there will be a big ass war. We'll okay. just make one up with somebody like we did the last couple times. So, and Jake, back to you. I know you're a Clancy fan. If uh, any of you guys haven't checked him out yet, I really recommend Brad Thor. He does some really great stuff in the very Clancy vein. I uh, yeah, I actually have some of his books here that I, I should do a giveaway on. Um. So, Brown Owls helps make this show possible. The leading supplier of firearm accessories, gun parts, and gunsmith and tools. You can find it all at Brown Owls. Please visit thisweekinguns.com slash Brown Owls. And you can now contribute to FRN and This Week in Guns by shopping Amazon. So, please bookmark firearmsradio.tv slash Amazon and use it before you uh, buy something uh, on Amazon. I appreciate it. So we're to the pick of the week where we choose a product to highlight gun accessory, gadget, etc. So my pick of the week, I guess I'll put that Tom Clancy book in here too. I'm going to have like 12 pick of, picks of the week because I already <laughs> have two. Um, my pick of the week is Recoil Magazine. I just picked up the newest uh, edition. And uh, I have an interview with Ian Harrison that's coming out this Sunday on Gun Guy Radio. So you'll have to check that out as well. And also one of our team members here on the Firearms Radio Network has a great article. Yes, the lovely Julie Golub, Renaissance woman here in uh, Recoil Magazine. Pretty cool article. So... Check that out, newest edition. And uh, my other little pick of the week is a tech pick that uh, if you're a podcast listener, which I know most people that consume this program are podcast listeners, the Roku, 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 Roku I don't know, how, how would you pronounce that? R O K. Spell it. R <laughs> I want to say Roku, like the Roku player, but that's not it. It's Roku. I can't say it. R O K E R. It's a SoundCube portable wireless uh, Bluetooth stereo speaker. So it's um, I should have brought it in. It's in my in my truck, but it's, it's about Jake, those are those are rockers. Rocker. Yeah. There we go. Rocker. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day, so it's a little bit bigger than the iPhone, and it's a cube, so it's about four times as wide as the iPhone five. But it's a lithium battery powered Bluetooth speaker. And uh, it's pretty slick because I, I have a work truck uh, for my day job that doesn't have any kind of radio. So being able to, to plop this on the dashboard and just it syncs up almost instantly with my iPhone. I can listen to all the Firearms Radio Network podcasts and other audio. And I can also like go into like a gas station, come out, and it'll still be synced and everything, so the range is really decent. You know, that's with me with my iPhone in my pocket. Um, so it's pretty slick, and it's only twenty bucks. Uh, it's yeah. twenty two twenty two ninety nine right now. I I got for nineteen ninety nine, but you know, Amazon prices fluctuate. It has like eight hour runtime. Uh, really a steal for for 
what it is. Um, you know, it'd be good for um, if you're maybe uh, working at a job site or something, you need a quote unquote boom box where you could just use this tiny little thing. But, and sound uh, sound quality is pretty good for the size. For for podcasts, it's fantastic. For for um, rate for um, excuse me for music, it's um, about like FM radio or so. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, for for the size, it's it's what you expect. For size and price, yeah, I, I'm blown away. For twenty bucks, I mean, you know, ten years ago, you couldn't buy a boombox for like twenty bucks, but. Yeah, I can get this little thing that syncs with my iPhone, which I can play anything on. It's cute that you still say boombox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I had a boombox. I picture you, like, walking on the street with it on your shoulders, breakdancing. Side note, have you seen the Taco Bell, like, 12-pack taco boxes? They're, like, boomboxes. No. Yeah. I've missed that. Yeah, I want to go get that right now. And Taco Bell's serving breakfast now. What's up with that? Uh, it's another sign of the apocalypse. <laughs> Anyways, enough with my picks of the week. Peter, what do you have? I have this cool little thing. I actually just discovered it today. A police friend of mine saw it in a hospital. It's called the Toothette Oral Care Untreated Disposable Oral Swab. And I know you're all laughing, ha-ha, oral. But... What it is, if you could, see, you can't see it if if you're on a podcast, but literally it looks, it's like a pink little fuzzy on the end of a stick. It's almost like a giant Q-tip, and on the one end is like a pink fuzzy thing that is almost shaped exactly like the star chamber in an AR-15. And so my friend saw this when he was in the hospital visiting his mother or something like that, and was like, "What is that?" And he asked for one, and he got the wrapper, and then he, you could get them online like about a million of them. For like thirty bucks or something like that, and it would be perfect just to stick in that chamber. And once you got all the main grid out, you could get it all in there and just throw this out. It's kind of like the you know they sell those ones. Uh, Board little, tips or yeah, little tips like that. But this is like perfect for the chamber, and you just get it in there, and then you could clean it awesome. And it's almost like designed for it, and and they're almost next to nothing. So, Toothette Oral Care Untreated Disposable Oral Swab. Like That's a Sage cool. Products makes it in from Illinois. Look at that. There you Gary, go. Gary, Illinois. There you go. The world center of uh, oral products. No, I, <laughs> I don't really know. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. The show took a weird turn. But I want to. I'm just gonna buy like a thousand of them and just when I clean it, just throw it. Like it's so good for mi administratively cleaning your firearm. And you could probably you could even fit one of these in an MS Clean Kit if you wanted to. I'm sure. Very cool. Joe, what do you have? Well, Peter, I need you to brace yourself. Okay. I'm going to have an opinion, and the opinion is going to be slightly based on the way something looks. Okay. Are, are you going to be okay? As long as it's a purse or something that's just, or like a painting. Okay. Well, just brace yourself or, or mute the mic or something. Okay. I want you to take your Prozac, something. I don't know. Okay, here we uh, go. I picked the, uh, the Liberty Safe, uh, the Fat Boy in particular. I, I just got this a, a few months ago. Um, MSRP is a little high if you go to the Liberty site, but there's lots of places that you can order it. I, I got the Fat Boy Junior delivered to my house tax-free from Florida for $12.99. Uh, wow. curbside, curbside delivery. And the MSRP on it is like $1,600. And I got a $12.99 tax-free. It came with a humidifier, a dehumidifier. Wait, wait, wait. Did you buy that on Amazon with my uh, affiliate link? I absolutely <laughs> did, Jake. Not. Um, yeah, no, I'm sorry, but I did not. But uh, uh, I didn't know you had an affiliate link at the time. Let me let me use that excuse. But anyway, I, I'm a big advocate of responsible gun ownership, and part of being responsible is to, to keep them locked up from uh, unauthorized use. And uh, uh, the, the liberty, of course, is the Cadillac of all safes and forever lifetime, beyond lifetime warranty. Uh, absolute no question asked guarantee if there's ever a fire, flood, or break in, they just come out and replace your safe, period. Uh, no paperwork, no nothing, just here's your new safe. And uh, American made, which is great. And, uh, you know, I, I sleep well at night. I've got three little kids, and I know that uh, my guns are completely locked up and un unobtainable by them. How so much how, is, sorry. 
Yeah, and how did it show up? Like, what kind of truck did it show up in? It, it came uh, drop shipment. Came in a uh, you know kind of a, a flatbed box van kind of a thing. Uh, the packaging says it weighs nine fifty. Um, I'm I'm a pretty stout guy. I'm six three, about three hundred pounds, and I was able to get it in the house and positioned by myself. I highly recommend a two man team doing it though. Did but you I had use a, PVC pipe rollers like I did? Uh, well, to g actually, to get it off of the crate, it comes bolted to the the pallet. Mm -hmm. I, I did use the PVC pipe trick that I've seen on YouTube and some other places, and then I used furniture dollies to move it Ooh. up the sidewalk to the house. Put it in the house. Had a big, uh, you know, one of those big appliance dollies, and with the dolly, I was able to maneuver it into position. Bolted it to the floor. It took me uh, maybe four hours to from from inspecting the delivery to finally done, bolted and everything. Took me about four hours to install. So you, comes, come, you come home and you just have the safe sitting in the street in front of your house? No, 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 not at all. You have to schedule a time and you have to have oh. a, an adult there to sign for it. And I just, I took the day off and uh, the guy gave me a four hour window. I'll be here between eight and noon. And, you know, he he, he was within that window and there you go. Again, twelve ninety nine delivered tax free. That's um, epic. And the guy I bought it from is it legitimate? This isn't you know some guy who found it on a truck kind of thing. He's he's actually got a safe company out of Florida. Uh, he was running a special at the time. It came with a, a dehumidifier, and I had my choice of either the electronic lock or the uh, mechanical lock. Uh, no no price increase or decrease there. And Liberty now includes a door panel uh, on all of their safes, or at least they do on the Fat Boy and. Uh, uh, killer deal. And, Peter, I'm sorry, it's a good-looking safe. Uh, just because of the my, my house layout, I don't have it in my living room, but it could be in my living room and not look out of place. It, it is, uh, you know, I want to say furniture grade, but you, you get what I'm saying. It's it's not uh, it's not this big honking, you know, stack-on random piece of metal box. It's the, the edges are rounded a little bit. It's got some pinstriping on it. The, the paint job is really good, high-quality paint job. Graphics are all really artistic looking, and it's a it's a quality piece, you know. I really I really recommend them if you're in the safe market or what have you. Very cool, and uh, <laughs> believe it or not, Amazon does carry Liberty safes. <laughs> now, are they Liberty or are they Centurion by Liberty? Uh, actually, this one is Freedom Safe by Liberty. Okay. Um, all liberties are made in America too, so that's that's even their centurions and uh, their freedom lines are, are made in America. They they do sell some of the smaller ones that are labeled liberty. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, support American, and it's got a uh, it's got a uh, gosh, I, it's either 45 minutes or an hour. I, I forget now. Uh, burn time, which you know I, I hope and pray never do I have to test. Yeah, awesome. that'd be rough. Good. Good pick. So let's see here. That uh, about wraps up the show. So please uh, leave feedback by commenting on the bottom of this YouTube video or on the bottom of the show notes, which will be at thisweekinguns.com slash 064. And uh, please leave us a iTunes review, thisweekinguns.com slash iTunes. And uh, don't forget you can contribute to uh, the Firearms Radio Network and This Week in Guns by shopping our Brownells and Amazon affiliate links, thisweekinguns.com slash brownells or firearmsradio.tv slash Amazon. And that uh, wraps up the show. So, Peter, MS Clean Kits, uh, what's what's going on? Well, we are we did some cool stuff today. We filmed which if you, I will be putting up on the Facebook page. I don't want to let the cat out of the bag quite yet, but it'll be, it's some stuff that's pretty amazing, uh, surprising at least. And um, we are offering them now with either Frog Lube, Fire Clean, or Slip 2000, so you have that option now that you didn't have previously. just came with Frog Lube, and uh, we will most likely be going to the NRA show. So if anybody's going there, um, and wants to talk to me about it, I will be there. Or wants to give me a place to stay, because I don't, I haven't, I got the plane ticket, but not the actual place to stay yet. So, but I'm pretty resourceful. <laughs> so, 
so they're they're fully up and for sale and you know yes you can go on www.misscleankits.com and then you could see all kinds of information about it and uh, you could also see um you know it'll take you links to where you could purchase it at Saints Tactical and there's a bunch of other pl- people that have them uh weapons uh weapon outfitters has them now and there's um you know Rockwell Tactical has them a bunch of people are buying them up a bunch of dealers, so it's starting to get out there. Once people get them in their hands, they realize how much they need them. Hopefully, <laughs> very cool. And Joe, you got yes, anything sir. you want to plug? Uh, you know, no. Life is good. I'm I'm blessed more than I deserve. Uh, you know, don't give up on public teachers. We're we're working hard. That's that's what I want to plug. Absolutely. No, I agree totally. So that's uh. About wraps up the show, and uh, tune in next week. We'll see you then.